I've been crucified with Christ I've been crucified with Christ I no longer live but Christ lives in me We welcome you to our Bible study today uh, Bible study of the Apostles Doctrine on the subject of speaking in other tongues and our subject tonight is going to be in regards to a question found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 30. Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? Do all speak with tongues? The Apostle Paul was writing to the church at Corinth about the gift of tongues, one of the nine gifts of the Spirit, that's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 10. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another divers kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All of the gifts of the Spirit were in operation in the first century apostolic church. So says 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 4 through 7. I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ that in everything ye are enriched by him, in all utterance, and in all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that ye come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now notice it was said to the Corinthian church that they would not come behind in any gift while they were waiting for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So there's a point of reference there. They were all looking for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ in the first century. When it comes to speaking in tongues, there was a lot of confusion about the gift of tongues and the gift of interpretation. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, Paul wrote to the church to clarify the problem. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 1 through 4. Follow after charity, and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the Spirit he speaketh mysteries. But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edifieth the church. I thank my God I speak with tongues more than ye all. Yet in the church I had rather speak five words with my understanding, that by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Brethren, be not children in understanding. Howbeit in malice be ye children, but in understanding 
be men. How is it then, brother, when you come together, every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation? Let all things be done unto edifying. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, or at the most by three, and that by course, and let one interpret. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church, and let him speak to himself and to God. Let the prophets speak two or three, and let the other judge. If anything be revealed to another that sits by, let the first hold his peace. For ye may all prophesy one by one, that all may learn, and all may be comforted. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all churches of the saints. Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy, and forbid not to speak with tongues. Let all things be done decently and in order. It was only at the church in Corinth that there was a lot of confusion about the gift of tongues and the gift of interpretation of tongues. That's why the Apostle Paul was writing to clarify, to straighten out some of their problems. There are a lot of people today who do not believe in speaking in tongues simply because of this question in 1 Corinthians 12 and 30. They summarize that this experience must not be for everyone. There are many church denominations that teach the Holy Spirit of God is received by simple faith without any kind of evidence whatsoever. But what do the scriptures say? First of all, in the Bible, there are two kinds of speaking in other tongues. One is the kind mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 10 and verse 28. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, divers kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversity of tongues. The word gift that's used there is the Greek word Charisma. God endowed this gift upon a believer by the operation of the Holy Ghost in the church. The Greek word charisma is used in some of the following scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 4. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 10, 28, 30, and 31. 30 and 31. Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. A close look at the scripture indicates an obvious distinction between this gift of the Holy Ghost, which is one of nine gifts, and the gift of the Holy Ghost, of Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The gift of the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, that is the gift of the Holy Ghost with the initial infilling of the Holy Ghost speaking with other tongues. The gift charisma of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 10 denotes an altogether different manifestation of the Spirit of God in church. There is a difference. There's two kinds of speaking in other tongues. One is the gift of the Holy Ghost. 
The other is the gift of the Holy Ghost itself. The one that's required in the new birth and being born again. The other kind of speaking in tongues is the gift of the Holy Ghost found in the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 38 and 39. Verse 39, For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. In Acts chapter 2 verse 38 and 39, we find that the word, the gift here is the Greek word doria, and it denotes the manifestation of speaking in other tongues as the physical evidence of receiving the Spirit of God. This Greek word doria indicates that the apostolic church of the first century believed that the gift of the Holy Ghost must first have been received with the biblical evidence of speaking in other tongues before the same Holy Ghost experience could work through an individual using any of the various nine gifts of the Spirit. I want to reiterate the fact that there are two different words being used here. The word gift as charisma and as doria. But there are two completely different manifestations of the Holy Ghost. The same evidence that they did receive on the day of Pentecost in the book of Acts chapter 2 verses 1 through 4. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Understanding these two words, Doria and Charisma, will help you to understand the speaking in other tongues experience. Jesus said, you must be born again. In John chapter 3, and verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And in John chapter 3, verses 5 through 8. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, Ye must be born again. Jesus said without this spiritual experience of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, with the initial evidence of speaking in other tongues, He said without it you would not enter into the kingdom of God. That's how important it is. To know what you have and to have that experience based upon book, chapter, and verse in the Bible. Notice in verse 8. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. This spiritual experience that you see and hear, that the Apostle Peter said in the book of Acts chapter 2 and verse 33, this spiritual experience is going to happen to everyone the same way. It happens to everyone. If you believe the scriptures in John chapter 7, verse 38 and verse 39. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Jesus said this spiritual experience was going to flow out of your innermost being like rivers of living water. If you believe on Jesus like the scriptures have said. Now if you're believing the leadership of your church and they don't believe in speaking in other tongues, 
then you're never going to hear what you need to hear because you can't believe in something you don't know anything about. And if the leaders in your church don't have it, don't believe in it, don't believe it's necessary and available, then you're never going to receive it. In the book of Acts, chapter 8, verse 14 through 18, you'll notice what the scripture said. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down, prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now here in Samaria we see the evidence of people that believed and believed enough to be baptized in water in the name of Jesus, but they had not yet received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They had not yet been spiritually born again. So when they went down and prayed for them, the Bible said that they received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. In Acts chapter 10, verses 44 and 48, the scripture said, While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. This same experience that happened on the day of Pentecost in the second chapter of the book of Acts. A lot of people believe that was only for them, a one-time experience. But here's proof that people that went with the Apostle Peter saw that the same Holy Ghost experience was poured out upon the Gentiles, for they too heard them speak with other tongues. They saw and they heard this spiritual experience of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The Bible said they received the Holy Ghost. And in Acts chapter 19, verses 1 through 6, the scripture said this. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coasts, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus and when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. Here's a great example of some good-hearted Baptist people that believed, that were called disciples, but yet had not heard anything about this spiritual experience. So we understand that in our journey of faith, a lot of us start out at different times and places, different churches. Methodist, Baptist, whatever it might be. But simply we started that journey. But if we continue to search the scriptures, if we continue to reach out to God, then the truth will come into our lives. The baptism that those disciples had in the book of Acts chapter 19 was the baptism of John the Baptist. But when the rest of the message came, they followed through with it, and as a result of their obedient faith, they too were filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost speaking in other tongues. So it will be with all who are sincerely searching and looking to have God, a relationship with God in their life. Two kinds of people in the world today, shoppers and searchers, people who are shopping for a religion to feed feed their lifestyle, or people who are actually searching to find and have a relationship with God. There are many sincere-hearted people today who that believe that they are filled with the Spirit by a simple faith, but they are not. 
It's because they've been taught that tongues are not for us today. People that do not believe in speaking in other tongues are people who have never spoke in other tongues. There are many different churches today and church leaders that do not have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. How can they speak about something that they don't know anything about? Herein lies the problem. If all you believe in is what you have been always taught, then the outcome of your decisions and your actions are based on the input of your information. Whether right or wrong, you will become what you are taught. What you are taught affects your life and your lifestyle. You cannot believe in what you do not know. You cannot know what you do not hear. And you cannot hear without a preacher. And he cannot preach without being sent by the Lord. So says Romans chapter 10 and verse 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. There is only one gospel of Jesus Christ. And what that gospel says to one person on this earth, it says to all people. And what it requires of one person, it requires of all people. What it has to give to one person, it has to give to every person. Jesus said in John chapter 14 and verse 6, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. The baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in an unknown tongue is God's promise for you. Acts chapter 2, verse 33 and 39. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this, which ye now see and hear. For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. If you believe that God has called you, then this experience is for you. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. So by one Spirit are we all baptized into the body of Christ. Without the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you are not in the body of Christ. You must be born Again, there is something that you have to do. You have to believe and obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. You must die to your sinful life. You must be baptized or buried in a watery grave. And you must be filled with the resurrection life of Jesus Christ in order to be in the kingdom of God, in order to be born again. There's only one way to do it. Make sure it's the Bible way. It's not a way that somebody told you or that you figured out on your own. There is a way, the scripture said, that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is the way of death. The scripture said, lean not unto your own understanding, but trust in the Lord. You will never trust God anymore that when you trust His word. You are what you are. You are not what you say you are. You are what you are. There are many people from all kinds of churches around the world today receiving this Pentecostal experience. The same experience that came on the day of Pentecost in the book of Acts chapter 2 almost 2,000 years ago. Remember, deception is a little bit of truth and a little bit of lie mixed together. You have not because you ask not. Trust God. In Luke chapter 11, verse 9, 10, and 13. And I say unto you, ask, 
and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? All you have to do is ask, seek, and ye shall find. You discover that when it comes to the Bible, the more you look, the more you will find. God said in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verses 12 and 13, Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you, and ye shall seek me, and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Searching involves doing something. If you attend a church that does not believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost, then start looking for one that does. Go where this experience is happening. Realize it's not an option. You must have this experience to be saved. Churches cannot save you. Going on into a church doesn't mean you're a Christian. Walking into a garage doesn't make you a mechanic. Stepping out onto a farm doesn't make you a farmer. So just because you go to church does not mean that you are a born-again Christian. You have got to start looking for it. Start seeking. Start searching. Start asking God. Only the gospel of Jesus Christ can save you. Here's a simple reminder. If you ask your church preacher that you attend church right now about something he doesn't have, you're always going to get the wrong answer. You'll never trust God more than when you trust His Word. You can't talk about what you don't have. You can't explain what you yourself don't first understand. If you are really seeking and searching, you're listening to this lesson on YouTube. It's an open door of opportunity for you to learn for yourself. Open the book we call the Bible. Start searching these scriptures. You can never trust anyone more than you trust the people that follow Jesus. The apostles were there. They saw, they heard, they experienced everywhere they went. They talked about the Lord Jesus Christ. They talked about the gospel. What they said so impacted the lives of first century Christians that they went and sold their houses and their lands and laid the money at the feet of the apostles because they believed the apostles what they were saying about the return of Jesus in their lifetime, in their generation. It's up to you. You will determine the outcome of your life. Remember, your destiny is not one of chance. It is one of choice. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4. You were called, chosen in Him before the foundation of the world. It's God who seeks to be a part of your future. Thank you for listening to the lesson today. Any questions, comments, you can email us at the New Covenant Apostolic Church at gmail.com. I've been crucified with Christ. I've been